Hello folks, Scott Grove here, GroovyMusicLessons.com. I gotta do it again, Dr. Groovy! Not to be confused with Rocker Scooby. <laughs> um, real quick, yeah, we're gonna do some more uh, trade stuff here. Speaking of Rocker Scooby, boy, he got a lot of hits now, thanks to me. Of course, he was trying to make fun of me, but it was still too funny to not enjoy. So, thanks you all for going over and check out the performance. Um, I know some people hate it just because, you know, he was trying to be a dick, but some people loved it because he did it so well, so whatever. It was cool. Um, again, go check that out. It's fun for whatever. I, I enjoy the shit out of it, you know, even though I know I'm getting made fun of. Uh, there's not a day goes by where I'm not made fun of at least a thousand times, so no big deal. Um, and also on his, on, what, what does he call himself? John Smith, I think, is <laughs> his name. Yeah, there's a super twat on there that uh, you'll find there. Uh, typical crap. Yeah, I, I called Scott Grove out on him, him saying he played with Johnny Cash. And he, he's never played with anybody. And, and he's, never, he's never done anything ever, never played with anybody. Except for the only thing claim to fame he has is Star Search. And oh, it's like... Uh, I would love all this if it wasn't for pieces of crap like these. Again, I can prove every one of these, but I don't need to. But I will, if need be. Oh, and he also said, yeah, for you guys. Um, now he has resorted to stooping so low since his videos don't sell at all that um, he's having to trade them for lollipops or whatever it says on there. You have to go read it. But it's just, it's just funny, just to give you somebody else to go yell at if you want to. So it's over on the video of the guy who's doing the parody of me. So you can find that super twat over there. So, we've got uh, two new boxes and a day of stuff. And I know some people keep saying, just like I told you not to, hurry up and give me your give me your address. Like, I haven't got time yet. I told you I'll get there eventually. And if you keep yelling, then you won't get, won't get to participate. So, wait, I've, I've got a life, people. <laughs> I'm taking, a couple minutes out to help you out. My wife just left to go to church, and I'm going to do this while she's at church, and then I'm going to be with her the rest of today through Monday. So I may not get to talk to anybody till Tuesday. Um, sorry, in the end, she means more to me than anybody else. So I'm going to hang out with my wife for a little while. Okay, today's offerings. Um, Gary, right here, one of my favorite people. Um, can I pick favorites? Of course I can. Um, from Farmington, New Mexico. Uh, I wasn't supposed to say the city. Uh, I used to play there a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. What was that place called? The uh, Top Deck? Upper Deck? Top Deck, I think. One of the two. I mean, it's been 20 years. Um, I'm sure it's still there. All the Indians sat on one side of the room, all the white guys sat on the other side of the room. And then play pool upstairs, and um, Gary will know what I'm talking about. Okay, so got your big thing today. Strictly photos and awesome stuff. And again, for anybody that doesn't know what the hell I'm doing or talking about, uh, you probably should par watch part one of this instead of joining at part four. So again, yeah, just trading for all my lessons um, that I normally charge for. And, yes, plenty are still selling every single flipping day like crazy for the one dumbass over there at um, Rocker Scooby's channel. <laughs> that has to be such a twat. Anyway, Gary, my friend, sent me um, some awesome pictures of himself, him, his son, and some... Here's an old friend of mine I got to play with also for that same fucker that drives me nuts. Um... Picture here, uh, so this here one was taken an hour after uh, David Allen Coe did a show in Durango, Colorado. Uh, I cut all my hair off a week before this pic. Uh, this bar has now been torn down. So cheers from Gary. So he wrote on the back of each thing. But there's David Allen Coe and there's Gary. But Coe wearing one of his infamous wigs. No, he never had real hair of any kind that looks like this anyway. You can see it on a couple album covers, but yes, those are wigs, people. He does not, never has had long hair. Um, his natural hair is almost as bad as Gene Simmons' hair. <laughs> okay, so um, there's Gary. Right there. Just cut all his hair off. 
and David Allen Co. Okay, so I got to play all the good old songs, you know, Finger Fucking Sally, and I'm the only son of a bitch alive that made Linda Lovelace gag, and um, she ran off with a nigger. Um, <laughs> great songs. <laughs> uh, uh, the next picture here. Oh, this one's cool. Um, I'm just reading the back of these for you, because it's show tell time. Scott, this picture was taken backstage at the Reno Hilton before uh, the Skinnerd show. Uh, me and my son are sitting on the chairs. This is 2004, so 10 years ago. I bought the 30th anniversary Epiphone Les Paul they were selling. The band signed it after the picture was taken. Uh, three of the members in the photo are now dead, of course. You know, Billy and everybody, man. Damn. Uh, after they played Freebird, Johnny Van Zant, who I've met, cool dude, um, and the whole family, uh, took the rebel flag off the mic stand and gave it to my son. Now how cool is that? Okay, to have Van Zant give your son the rebel flag, man. Uh, it's been on the wall in my music room ever since. What memories. So, there's Gary and his son down here on the chair with the, you'll see it inlaid on the, uh, I want to get in here on this too, on the uh, fretboard. I'm bending it back so I can check it out. But the, where it says Leonard Skinner inlaid on the fretboard of the guitar. So there's Gary and his son and the Skinnerd boys. Here's Billy. He's passed on. Three of these guys will have. Holy cow. Gary Rosington. Awesome photo. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, yeah, everything's always so coincidental. I was playing in, um, I think it was Waycross, Georgia, with uh, Mark Cash, who is Johnny Cash's brother's son, so Johnny Cash's brother is named Tommy Cash, who had a hit with a little song called Six White Horses for anybody who knows any Cash history, and that's how I got hooked up with all the Cash family, was originally Mark, who didn't want to be so much associated with his family. He wanted to make it on his own, which he never did, but there's pictures of him, I mean, videos of him and Tommy Cash at the Tommy's birthday party here, right here on YouTube, and you can see them both, and I can play you some videos of those guys, no problem, or you can call them. They live in Henderson, Nevada. Uh, Tommy's still a real estate broker, blah, blah, blah. Tommy still works on the docks. I know, keep my day job. But, um, yeah, we were playing there and then got to meet the whole Van Zant family uh, while we were playing at the club there. And My stepdad at the time, uh, which will come into play again in a second, uh, happened to drop by the show and take some pictures. Uh, I've, got, I've actually got... Um, where I show some pictures, uh, one of my video, many videos on here where I go through my photo albums and tell the same story actually uh, at the place um, but where all the Van Zants were and my stepdad out there taking the picture for me so awesome photo Gary man I love it good looking son, good looking axe I, I remember seeing those in the catalogs with the Skinner thing inlaid on the fretboard, very cool now this is cool. Again, we're still in Skinner territory. Scott, I lived in uh, Jonesboro, Georgia uh, when the first Skinner album came out. This is Jonesboro uh, where Skinner took the pick for the uh, very first album. I'm standing in the same spot. Uh, we lived in a farmhouse about two miles away from this photo. The album came out in 73 and I took this in 74 after I got a camera. Skinner signed the back, uh, this backstage at the Hilton in 2004. This is a copy of his original. And what I was going to mention before, um, yeah, the Skinner plane crash happened on my birthday, um, October 20th, but in 1977. And then I started playing clubs three days later. October 23rd, 77 was my big debut. So yeah, he's standing in the same damn spot. That, that's great, man. It's so cool. And then they, in 2004, again, at the gig, uh, signed this. So from the first album. <laughs> Check it out. Isn't that cool? So, yeah, standing in the same damn spot. <laughs> 
and got it signed by all the guys. And again, this is, you know, a photocopy off of his computer from his original. Of course, I'm not going to get his original photo. But it's just, you know, just like kind of like going to Abbey Road, you know, and getting your picture taken on the crosswalk, man. It's just history. So this is cool shit, Gary. And I'm glad Gary sent me something. I, I've liked Gary for a long time. He's such a cool guy. I love it when people actually have names on their stuff, too. Even I do actually have a Scott Grove account. Nothing's on there, but it's on there for when I get kicked off of my groovy one. I can still say hi to people. Okay, and finally from Gary, a final photo. Um, with a cousin comes involved, uh, Dwayne Rowland from Molly Hatchet, back in Indiana. Uh, Scott, I took this photo with a 35 millimeter camera during Molly Hatchet's 1979 tour of America, Flirting with Disaster uh, album was out. Uh, this was a venue called the Center Stage on the outskirts of Detroit, so that's close to home, so they're just playing close to home. Uh, it was a show I will never forget. People were dancing on the tables. They played their asses off. I printed this off of my computer due to my negatives or in boxes with all my concert photos from my lifetime of photos. I hope you can appreciate it as is. Of course I do, my friend. Um, thanks for all of your videos and knowledge and fun. Cheers, brother. Uh, from Gary. And he sent me a... Did I bring it in here? Um... <laughs> Anyway, from my Nigel character, he calls himself Figel. So I open it up and it says, To Nigel from Figel, you know, then a LOL. So it's it's funny. Gary, Gary's a great guy. So if you guys ever see Gary, his whole name's on the thing. So I might as well. Uh, Vivoda, V-I-V-O-D-A. Um, he puts his whole name out there for you guys to all read. So uh, just know that Gary's a great guy when you see him on all my uh, when it posts on everything I do. He'll have a post on it. And he's just nothing but courteous every damn time so um, so let me remind, remind me Gary if it's top deck or upper deck I know upper deck makes sports cards so it must have been the top deck there in uh, Farmington New Mexico let me know if it's still there dude and it's phone number and everything here on the back and address and what, email and but anyway here's Molly Hatchet from back then so, very cool to share these. So I appreciate it, my man. And of course, everybody, Elliot Hookup, which is what this is about. It's show and tail, and then I go do my horse trading. The other one today, um, I had two of the four of these Kiss collectibles, and these are the Alive One dolls from the Alive One album, but you know, made later by, by McFarlane. Or McFarlane, however you want to say it. Seth McFarlane doesn't say McFarlane. <laughs> and I think, is Spawn even in on these two? Um, we'll have to look. I know it's a, yeah, Spawn is there too. Um, anyway, from Mark, um, over next door in Arizona. And this is a amazing trade that he and I have going, so... Um, he hooked me up, kids, and of course this is the only way to collect KISS collectibles. Like I said, I had Paul and Gene, which is always easy, but getting the Ace and Peter stuff is always tough. So, yeah, the whole set. So there you go, you got Ace, classic pose. He's got his 73 um, Les Paul here, Les Paul Deluxe, with the mini humbuckers taken out, and the... DeMarzio Super Distortions put in. Some things that they got wrong in here, but that doesn't matter. It's just, it's what they are. Again, see Spawn and McFarlane should be up here. Um, McFarlane. So we got Space Ace, but then we have the picks. It'll say Ace. Um, just cool stuff. And the Marshall Half Stack. But they can't put the Marshall word in there. Okay, so very cool. So that one I did not have. Then you have, here's Paul playing. I don't know what kind of guitar they tried to make this, but 
It was a live one, so he's using a lot of strange Gibsons back at the time. Okay. He was using the L6S, the Marauders, the Fine Vs, of course. Uh, of course, you get for your firehouse, you get your little light and your Marshall half deck, your pick. Um, the whole thing, when you set them up next to each other, would look like this if you would take them out of the case and set them up. But you don't take collectibles out of their boxes. No, no, no. So, how groovy is this stuff? And I have got, like, uh, chests. Yeah, like treasure chest looking things from a pirate ship. <laughs> Loaded up with kiss stuff, and I just love it. Um, here's Gene with his either, no, that's his grabber, because it's got the, it actually shows the sliding pickup. Um, if you can see under his fingers at all. I don't know if you can, but it actually shows the sliding pickup. So it's supposed to be the grabber. They made the body a little small, but so be it. And of course, we all know Gene used SVT Ampeg stacks instead of a Marshall half stack, but everything else is very period correct and very cool. Some of the better looking figures that they put out. Uh, the candelabra, which finishes out with a stand down here. Okay, and the gene pick, which makes the next one actually kind of funny. So Mark, much appreciated on this trade, my friend. Um, this is too cool. My wife, right before she went to church, she goes, holy cow, that's a trade. It's like, <laughs> I know. Um, here's Peter. Okay. Now, this one's just a tough land, you know. Sure, you could go on to eBay and buy these things, but if you can get them this way, hey. <laughs> um, I'm all about it. I, you know, would finish up the set sometime, but now I don't have to. I got all four right here in a nice box. They fit in perfectly, which I'll keep them in the box that Mark sent them to me in. And um, keep them just like this forever and ever. But how much stuff did we get? You got the throne, you got the separate hi-hat with the hi-hat pedal down there. You get the actual kick drum pedal. And a set of sticks. And two toms. You don't get a floor tom, it's the only thing. Um, your one symbol, so it's going to be your crash and your uh, right symbol all at once. But you get a Peter guitar pick. <laughs> so, why you got a Peter Chris guitar pick? I don't know. But I found it interesting to always be in these. So you get a pick from everybody. So, yeah, Pete picked around on guitar a little bit. So I guess we can have a pick in there for Peter too. So, Ace and Peter are always difficult to find. And there's always plenty around for uh, Gene and Paul, but uh, check this out. That's the snare right here. You see the snare is on the bottom. So they got Pete playing left-handed. <laughs> no, they've got it on the right side. I'm just looking in the guy. I'm looking in a reverse picture of the camera. Okay, yes, I'm guitarded. Okay, so we need to take it off the tom mount and put it down on a snare stand. But hey, we get the idea. But so we got Peter here too. So Mark, man, uh, just there's just not enough words. Um, again, we all know Gene and Paul, and they look great here, but to finally nab Ace and Peter and doing uh, deals like these, amazing, amazing. Thank you so, 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 so much. And I'm just, they're going to go in their trunk, or in their box that you sent them in back in the trunk along with uh, the letter and here are the kiss uh, figures you know we're trading and thanks for all the groovy lessons you provide to all us dumb motherfuckers keep doing what you do let the haters hate peace mark and amber <laughs> from uh, i won't say the name of the town i could it could be somewhere near whitman arizona 
and I love this. I'm going to cover everything else out. But, U.S. fucking A. <laughs> I wonder if that's what the Canadians call the U.S.A. The U.S. fucking A. <laughs> All the people in the U.S. are fucking A. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's it for this one. Uh, ten minutes shorter than all the others. So, um, Gary, Mark, uh, Amber, everybody involved, thank you, and I will get everybody hooked up. And you guys keep being groovy. And again, yeah, the haters are out, and I'm letting you guys go hate on them. So again, go to the channel where... Um, dipshit. I don't even remember his name, but anyway, so the guy who did the parody video, and you'll find the one guy who, well, I called Scott out, and uh, you know, I can't find anything on Google about him that makes him, you know, say he's ever done anything he ever said he did. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna hate some more on him, and you can go hate that moron if you want. I'm gonna go there and do it just for fun, cause he's such a dildo. Um, <laughs> but anyway, you guys be groovy, and um, the next videos you're going to get from me are going to be two different videos on this guy, which again is not mine. I'll buy another one someday. I had the first version, and it became worth so much money that I sold it. <laughs> Excuse me, damn. Um, that, but there's actually me burping up the uh, Dairy Queen Blizzard. Uh, my wife and I just got done eating the Blizzard. And we missed our walk, but we're going to walk after she gets back from church. So we went and got our blizzards from the blizzard card we got sent yesterday um, from right here, from um, Larry. So we went and um, got our blizzards. <laughs> oh, and also from yesterday over here on, was it Pete? I know it had to be Peter. Um, I know it was, had to be, had to be, had to be, had to be. Peter, yes, thank you. Um, the one DVD I showed, I mean CD, I'm sorry. Of course, this one, uh, of course, is him, because there he is. But this one here, where it shows the chicken or little coochie, he wrote me, and you'll probably see it on that one. But these are actually prank phone calls. Duh. So that's my bad. He let me know. But yeah, the, these are the crap me and my stepbrother used to do all the time. Um, but with all the cool... <laughs> things on the back so I will love that too I love the whole prank call crap um, I listen to Stern do all his prank calls all the time on YouTube but anyway um, thought I'd straighten that out and so I'll do the whammy pedal review of this big one like I said I had the original one the WH1 and sold it because it went for like 500 bucks it's like why not and these sound better anyway so I'll do the review on this let you see what it does and then I have to do a video to Digitech to get them to make a specific pedal if they will and show them from this what they could take from this two other things to add to it to make it an extremely useful country pedal because there's no country specific pedal out there again I don't know if it'll be enough to facilitate a pedal for country players but the technology is here um, they just need to incorporate a few other things and they can um, actually do everything they can make it do all the pedal steel effects it which it does which I'll show you but it needs something else and it needs something else to do to do them very well plus they can incorporate in a very easy circuit to uh, do um, intelligent um, G benders and B benders uh, so people don't have to put them on their guitars either and just have them all here but have an actual country pedal that could be called the steel pedal instead of the pedal steel and have it emulate all that stuff and to do things where you could actually flick it so it could um, do all of the uh, make it actually sound like it's coming into it actually like using a slide but you're not you know so come in just a little before it you don't have it be just a thing you can use, like a switch back and forth for whether you want a portamento effect, if you guys remember your analog synths and stuff, and kind of have the actual steel slide, but maybe a little bit of vibrato on there if you hold it long enough. You know, you can opt for all these things, but I will make that presentation also in addition to doing this. And then my Johnson uh, JT50 amp will be here Monday. And then we'll get to that, and I'll have every Johnson amp ever made, and multiples of them. But I haven't been missing—I've been missing the 50 all along. So anyway, 
Hey, it's 25 minutes now. Okay, so it's not such a short video. Um, so again, um, Mark and Gary, Amber, everybody involved. Um, thank you so much again. And once again, uh, yeah, you guys keep sending those requests and I'll get you the addresses, blah, blah, blah. And I can't get to them every day. Um, I can't, sometimes I can't get to them every other day. But I'll get to them eventually. Okay, so I know it sucks to wait, but there's a lot. There's a lot of them already, more than I can handle at the moment. And But I'm not going to leave you, anybody out of it. Again, like I said, I will catch up with you guys and everybody will get it. So um, I'm going to upload this now, wait for the missus to get home and go for my walk okay and then I'm gonna that'll be with the grandkids tomorrow a couple of them and go visit everybody and then Monday's a day off so wife gets the day off for President's Day at the post office so get to hang out with her and some more and the app will show up Monday and I can play around with it and start getting all the reviews done probably Tuesday again after my honeydews so you guys be groovy and catch you on the next one and thanks again um, everybody okay and go hate the haters i left them on here for you so you wanted them you got them <laughs> take care bye